Hey guys, how we doing today? Um, so, kind of picking away at some projects here at the uh, little garden house in Vagovo, Poland. And I kind of thought I'd show you some of what I'm doing. And um, uh, today we're actually sort of work on uh, making a new um, carved stone uh, marker for the for the house. You know, so it's going to have the the name of the cottage on it, and it's going to have the the house number, that kind of thing. You know, uh, so I thought I'd kind of take you through the process of lettering in stone. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy. All right, so basically what we've started out with here, I am no calligrapher. Um, so I ended up using a clip art program uh, to get the font that I wanted, the uh, the numbers that I wanted, and then I used some clip art um, for uh, the design I wanted on the stone. Um, so what I did is I printed all that out in the size that I wanted it, sized it up to the stone that we're going to be using, and um, and then it gets attached to a piece of transfer paper, which is this yellow that's here. Um, so from here, we'll take and we're going to use a pencil. We're going to trace everything out. And uh, that'll then put the, an outline onto the stone. And once I've got this traced out and I get to that point, I'll come back and uh, uh, show you guys the next step. All right, so... We've gotten everything traced out. One thing I will tell you is um, <laughs> yellow is not the best color for the transfer paper, um, especially when you're working on you know these uh, uh, this kind of stone. Um, it doesn't show up very well. Unfortunately, we're really limited here in Poland on what I can get. Um, that being said, it none of it shows up super awesome. Um, so what you end up doing is you go through, you trace everything out with a ballpoint pen. Um, you really want to make sure you rub down hard and get as best as you can. Then you'll notice, um, here, it sort of leaves <laughs> a mark. Now what I've gone and, uh, done is I'm going back through, um, just some acrylic paint, nothing fancy, the cheapest stuff you can get your hands on. Um, and this will help keep my pattern on the stone um while i work on each letter so i don't have to necessarily worry about um you know losing it and and having to go back and retrace and everything else i will keep this um pattern hanging up just so that i can reference it when i need to um because even at that even with the paint it's still going to come off um you know, as you get it deeper into the letters, um, you're removing more materials. So until you, you know, you'll get out to the, to those edges and, you know, I'm going to want to be able to look at like these details, you know, the serifs and, and whatnot in each letter. And, you know, there is going to be some stuff that I'm going to change up as well. Um, you know, like even on here, you'll notice I changed the shape of this, um, leaf because it's too close to the stem and it's just going to become muddled if I leave it. Uh, so as I'm going along, I'm probably going to pick things out, um, and make some changes. Um, you know, like I'm not a huge fan of these O's. Um, I may do a more traditional O with a very narrow center, but this gives me my top and bottom. So it stays, everything stays on a line. Um, and I don't end up with, uh, you know, one letter up here, one letter down here, all that. So, okay. Um, so I'm going to finish painting this in. And uh, then we'll move on to uh, starting to cut letters. All right, guys. So um, I've already started on, you know, the, the carving on this stone. And I really wanted to kind of dive into it without, you know, talking about it too much um, before uh, I, brought, I guys kind of brought you guys into it. Because this is a new approach for me. Um, Traditionally, I've worked on stones that are, you know, they have a cut finish um, or they're polished. So it's a nice flat surface. The letters are very consistently deep. It makes for an easy V. Um, this is my first attempt at a natural face stone um, with traditional V-cut letters. So it's been really challenging, especially this particular stone. Um, it's got... different you know some really pretty extreme different layers to it it's a very very hard type of slate um i'll turn you around here and you can 
I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So it's got a, a heavy quartzite structure. Um, and when you try and cut this, um, it doesn't cut, it shatters. Um, so that's been challenging. I've had to keep, you know, normally uh, on slate, I can go, you know, if I'm working pretty much, you know, consistently, I can, I can go probably two hours or so uh, before sharpening my chisels. Um, but on this stuff, man, I'm sharpening every 10, 15 minutes um, using a diamond stone uh, just to bring the carbide up to a, a nice uh, razor's point, as you can sort of see there. Um, but so basically, you know, what, what, we're, what we're doing here is um, trying to do a combination of, you know, a V-cut letter as well as dealing with the natural undulations of the stones. You can see this is much higher here than we are here. Um, so we, you know, trying to keep the depth, as you notice, I actually am going to have to bring this one further out here in order for this to look, um, symmetrical from a forward face. Um, even though that the V is the same width all the way around, um, because of this height, the optical illusion is that um it's gone narrower um just because instead of coming across this way the height is on this vertical face um what i also have found is up in here in this heavy quartzite structure um the chisel just wants to skate as you can see by these marks here um so what i'm going to end up doing is taking a rotary tool um with a um, like 20 degree diamond burr bit and kind of go through here. Instead of cutting it, I'm gonna grind these, grind this true again um, because every time I try and get down uh, any deeper, I'm shattering and it's just blowing everything out. Um, nothing's cutting properly. Um, whereas you can see on something like this, it's a nice clean slate. Um, it's a very nice, smooth, clean line. And then you get up into this quartzite and it just bounces and it's shattering out. So we're going to play around with that a little bit. Um, but we've made a lot of progress. Um, so I showed you before that, uh, I'd gone back through and painted and filled in, uh, the yellow. Now, um, if you notice, there's still some blue paint and stuff left out and around and a lot of that's just because uh as i've been cutting i haven't i you know i i've gotten the the cut to a point where i really like it and it doesn't need to take up all of the painted surface i actually think this is crisper um so it's been kind of interesting you know this project i haven't done um something like this rose uh in you know, a lettering style before. Um, so it's been an, an awful lot of fun. It's a wicked learning process. Um, now we're getting back to s traditional letter cutting down here. Um, but I want to make sure that once I cut all of these out, and I am, you know, now that I'm getting down into the traditional letters, um, like probably when I get to this O, I'll, um, I'll see if I can't get a video going of as as that process goes so i can show you the process of cutting a letter as well um yeah so that's where we're at as of right now um you know and uh hope we'll see you when i edit everything back together and we start cutting the uh the o all right guys so we're gonna get started on this o um i'm gonna be using this uh smaller lettering chisel um not for any particular reason other than it's uh, sharper. <laughs> um, so if you notice, these lettering chisels all have, it's this, they're not straight. This is called a skew. Um, and it allows you to get this uh, v, classical V shape in the, um, in the letter. Um, because we're not, I mean, we're, we're not just cutting straight into the stone. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get started by setting the chisel at a pretty extreme angle and then we're just going to give it a good tap 
And what that does is it kind of gives us a place to start. And then we're just going to take and start following the center line of the letter. And, you know, so the width of this, the width of the chisel only makes a difference depending upon the depth of the letter you're making. So, like with this R, um, I had this upper section was right at the maximum of this chisel. So I kind of went with the larger one to kind of swoop things out and allow it to cover more territory with each strike. Um, but you can do an awful lot with very, very little. Um, so what I'm gonna do is kind of set my beginning. And now we've got a, a, a bevel going this direction. So now I'm gonna approach this from this opposite side and following that same center line, start working this letter this direction. And if you notice, I'm running a fairly shallow um, attack angle on this. I'm not, I'm not coming in so that it's like super deep. So the more upright the skew is, the deeper it is, the more laid down, the shallower it is. And the reason I'm doing this in this particular stone is that I found if I go too deep, I end up into the quartzite and I don't get a good um, center line to begin with. Now, I'm probably, I mean, 32nd of an inch deep at this point um, you know this this is where it all takes time and if you notice I'm only doing just the side of this O and it's because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this O with two heavy deep V's here and here and then it's gonna go really shallow into a fine line that connects them. So it gives it more of that traditional, um, you know, uh, like letter style, I guess. It's not even really a traditional letter. It's not just that it's a traditional letter style. It's just the style of font that I want. Um, this particular font, um, you know, did have serifs. Uh, so a serif is the lines here on the ends of the, the letters. Um, and I've actually changed the sheriffs, the, the serifs a little bit, um, just to be more of what I want from it. So yeah, I mean that's that's kind of where we're at, and that's the basics of of, of letter carving. Um, each piece of stone is different, um, whether you know the type of stone or even like this. You know, this is technically slate, but it's full of quartzite, and so it's making it really difficult. Um, to stay consistent in some of the places. So, you know, for example, um, you know, up here in the, like I was showing the other day, up here in the, in the rows, you know, and so instead of cutting this, like some of these to get the depth that I need without having major blowouts, I'm going to have to grind these in, um, using a, uh, a rotary tool and, uh, diamond burbits. Um, just because, you know, I've got my main, my main outline set now, um, but I've got a problem where, uh, every time I try going deeper, I end up shattering the stone and it's causing a lot of problems. So, um, yeah, well, we'll, uh, conclude for this now and, uh, we'll come back once I'm, uh, you know, going through this section again with the, uh, rotary tool. Alrighty. So I guess we'll talk about, uh, rotary tools. Um, so this is my rotary tool. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's a cheap Ryobi. Um, I do have it where it's got a remote and it kind of hangs on a little stand here. Makes it super handy. Um, these are just diamond burbets from China. Super, super cheap. Um, I bought that whole package. The equivalent, I think it was like, uh, like $7 US. Um, and, you know, they... They hold up okay. I mean, they're not great. Um, the ones that I've used the most on here are completely whooped after this project. Um, it is what it is. You know, they're 
cheap Chinese industrial diamond uh, bits. Um, but they have their place. And so uh, we had talked about how uh, the quartzite um, on this particular stone um, caused my chisel to jump and, you know, I wasn't able to maintain depth. Um, it was shattering out uh, rather than cutting. That's where these come in super handy. Um, the one thing you've got to make sure that you do is you do those sections first uh, when your bit is its sharpest. It's got all the diamond on it. Um, don't get caught up into, oh, well, ooh, this little radius needs to be touched up a little bit. Wait, unless that's a hard spot that, um, you know, you really struggled with because of the quartzite, um, don't mess with it. Just don't mess with it. Um, but I think where these, where these really shine, um, is detail. Um, so let me see if I can adjust this down a bit here. Uh, so that we can see um, on the flowers, on the flower here and these uh, rose leaves, I ended up using a small bit um, that's actually, it's a chamfer bit, which is kind of really neat. Um, I don't know whether you can, whether we can get that to focus in there or not. Anyways, um, it's just a, a fine, a, a real fine side bit that you run this direction and it cuts a fine line. Um, can you do those with a chisel? Sure. Um, but you run, you've got to make sure that your chisel is exceedingly sharp. Um, and you run the risk of blowouts, you know, especially in slate, um, especially in this stuff here, because I've got a bunch of these, you know, my leaves are on the quartzite. Um, so every time I come across something like this, it's like chunk, oh, here comes a piece of stone, chunk, there comes a piece of stone. But when you grind these things in, um, you know, it, uh, you know, you're cutting that quartzite rather than uh, really, you know, shocking it and allowing the crystalline structure to shatter. Uh, so they're super handy. Um, the other place that it comes in really handy is like in a section like this here where I've got odd transitions. It's just allowed me to take, I was actually using... Uh, this bit here this allowed me to come down and kind of finalize some of these lines and bring them across um, All of this can be done with a hand file as well. They have diamond hand files or, ra or stone rasps um, And they work fine. It's just a slower process um, You know, I just wasn't looking to mess around with it. So I wanted to kind of get this um, You know the 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 process of um, recutting um, over and done with as quick as possible. Now, um, the other thing that it, these are really super handy for is like down here, I had a real problem with my gap between this letter, between the, the A and the, and the G. And so what this allowed me to do is rather than try and, you know, cause it's, it's, it's a small piece of stone here. Um, and I had too much width at the top and it made the, it made everything look a little wonky. Uh, so I was able to come in with the rotary tool and kind of bring each piece out just a, a little bit on each side, kind of evened it up. And I didn't run the risk of having this shatter out. So, you know, do you want to do a whole project with the rotary tool? Sure you can. Um, it can be done. Um, it depends. I mean, is that, is that what you want? Um, do you want to invest in hand, you know, in hand chisels? Probably, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, but, you know, at the same time, um, traditional letter cutting is, it's relaxing. Um, it's frustrating. It's challenging. It's a, it's really, it's a blast. Um, and for me, the, the rotary tool is an accent tool. It's not the tool that does the whole job. In modern, um... You know, like memorial work, almost every letter is cut with a rotary tool um, on a or uh, done with sandblasting. So, um, you know, I mean, it's granted it's larger scale. It's more like a router. Um, they're not using a small hand rotary tool like this. But yeah, you could do a whole piece like this. If you've already got the rotary tool, grab a piece of stone. Go out, have a good time. Try it, you know, see if it's, 
It's uh, something you enjoy, something that relaxes you. Uh, the, the thing that you've got to remember about stone is everything takes a long time. So I've been working on this piece um, for on and off um, over a week now. Um, it's not super deep lettering. Um, I've been working on it pretty much every single day, at least a couple hours a day, two, three hours a day, sometimes more. Um, but you have to think about it in longevity. A piece like this, this is going to be around for the next couple thousand of years, at least. Um, unless somehow somebody gets mad and breaks up with a sledgehammer. Um, but there'll still be remnants of my work sitting around. So take your time. Uh, it's something of value. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you've got any questions, shoot me a message. And we'll chat at you soon. Alright, later guys.